Cynthia, hey, how are you? Thank you so much for the dream interpretation request through Murmur. I'm excited to get to it. Uh, I think that what you've got to talk about in this dream interpretation is what I've experienced a lot before with a lot of the clients that I work with. Uh, I don't think it's that crazy. Um, I don't think any dreams are crazy, if I'm going to be honest, but yours especially is something I see quite a lot, and I've helped a lot of people work through, so I feel really confident about, you know, kind of talking through this with you and hopefully giving you some relief, because I know that with you being married and, you know, dreaming about your ex, that can be a little bit unsettling. Don't worry. I think you're going to be encouraged by what I've got to say. So I'm going to read through the dream, and then we're going to get to the interpretation here at the end, if that's cool with you. Okay. I have been having dreams about an ex-boyfriend of almost 15 years ago. No matter how many years pass, he will some he will always kind of pop up in your dreams. Not all of them, but most of them. We recently reconnected about four years ago, and I have him on social media, and sometimes we like each other's comments, etc. But I'm married with four children. Why does this keep happening? I have tried to find answers, and I haven't been able to. In my dreams, what I can remember is sometimes he's there, other times it's like we're together. It's so weird. How can I make these dreams stop? Well, first of all, we got to get to that idea that we need to make dreams stop. A lot of people tell me that and they they hope that I can make their dreams stop because they don't really understand the purpose and the meaning behind the dreams. Your dreams are a gift. They are there in order to help you. They're there in order to give you insight into what's going on below the surface of your conscious awareness. And we never want that to stop. Even if they're nightmares, actually, What people don't understand is when you have nightmares, it's venting out negative emotion that if you didn't vent out, it would come out in your day-to-day life while you're consciously awake, and you don't want that. Dreams are the gift of releasing that emotional energy. And so I don't, you know, maybe this sounds frustrating to you, but I really hope that they don't stop. But I hope that through having an interpretation and an understanding of kind of the way that the unconscious mind works, you'll be able to appreciate them and they won't be so bothersome. So what I do hope stops is that you're feeling awkward and weird and frustrated by your dreams because they are amazing. And so here's what your dream has to say to you. It's very common for people to dream about exes. And when we dream about exes, we're not dreaming about the ex in particular. Our unconscious mind, there's up here is the conscious brain. It's in the, it's in the frontal cortex of our brain. Everything behind the frontal cortex, right about here and back, is unconscious. We can't consciously control it. This is the stuff that controls logic and reasoning, our language processing, all of those things, executive function. Back behind that is like your memories, you know, your occipital lobes, your auditory lobes, your hippocampus, uh, your amygdala, fight or flight response, and your brainstem, which controls the very important uh, vital functions of your body. All of that stuff has consciousness and has emotions, especially like the amygdala and the hippocampus, which stores memories. That's where your emotions really come from. They don't come from up here. That's why we can't really think about emotions. We have to feel our emotions. And so, you know, part of what is we know about the unconscious mind is that when we think, we're able to kind of experience the outside world. We're able to kind of picture and imagine the reality that we want and to kind of move towards it. But our unconscious mind doesn't know how to do that. It's only going to be able to be in touch with your experiences. It's very kind of selfish in that way. That's a negative word, but I don't really know of a better word. Maybe self-centered, maybe, uh, you know, kind of intuitive, like intrinsic. Maybe those are better words. Not sure. But it's not going to have anyone else live inside your dreams. So when we think about an X, it's not that we're actually thinking about the X. We're thinking about what that X symbolizes to us. And it can symbolize a couple things. It can symbolize the way that you were at that time in your life, or it can symbolize an idea that this X was for you. So let's say that you're, and and I I don't know you here, Cynthia, but let's say that you're a shy type of person, but your X was very outgoing. If you have a dream about your ex who's very outgoing, it's a it's your mind trying to make sense of and trying to connect with your more outgoing nature so you can be more, more outgoing and not so shy. So you got to think to yourself, what was it about your ex that was like a defining characteristic? What do they symbolize to your unconscious mind that your mind wants you to pay attention to? But let's talk about that first thing I said. It can also be a remembrance of a part of your life, 
right? And so our mind will bring that back to us and we'll feel like we're back with our ex or we'll just remember them or they'll pop up in our dream because there's a part of ourselves that we're missing. You know, sometimes when we're younger, I mean, you said this happened 15 years ago. When we're younger, there's parts of ourselves that are like, oh, that's childish. I don't want to be that way anymore. Or I, that's not me. I'm going to push that to the side. And we can't really push that to the side. We just repress it. And so if your dream is giving you this symbol of your ex, you know, I want you to pay attention to that. I want you to write down in your journal, in your dream journal, what is it that they symbolize and what was some of the things about yourself that you used to have that maybe you don't have in the same way anymore. Maybe you were more outgoing, carefree, fun-loving. Maybe you enjoyed life a little bit more and life's just gotten a little bit tough because of COVID, because of responsibilities having four children. And so you're realizing, ah, I need to get back to that. I need to get back to my fun-loving, carefree, uh, enjoying side, the happiness that I missed when I was younger, when I was back in this relationship and didn't have a care in the world. I think that's more what your mind's trying to get you. It has nothing to do with you wanting to be back with your ex. I think it has a lot more to do with trying to get back and in touch with a part of you that is precious and important and beautiful that you deserve to get back in touch with. So I hope this is encouraging. I hope it makes you not feel so weird about having dreams about your ex because I know that can be a little unsettling. Uh, I hope that gives you some peace, Cynthia. Thank you so much. I'm glad that you are here and I will see you again real soon. If there's anything else I can do, I'm going to send this to you an email. Just send me a response. I'm happy to help. Until next time. Later.